So welcome everybody for uh, joining us, our conversations from home, volume number six. Today, we are going to invite Sho Kishino, the sculptor, and Nava from Philadelphia, the director of Center for Art in Wood in Philadelphia. And um, before uh, we are going to start this conversation series, I would like to thank you, uh, all of you, for today's participation, especially after the lockdown started in New York City. This is our almost inaugural exhibition after almost a half a year. And we are putting all together what you just saw in the video. This is the exhibition we are going right now. Unfortunately, it's so hard to welcome any guests at this point, but we are very thrilled to organize this show with our feelings uh, of respect and uh, res reverence to nature and all life, especially medium of wood is the medium returning back to the earth. And Sho Kishino, he is a sculptor, but at the same time living in a Zen um, life. This is the beautiful exhibition, almost like a, a oasis of peace. So we would like to share this beautiful exhibition and we want to talk about his life and welcome him from Kyoto. We would like to first introduce about today's artist, Sho Kishino. Actually, he's waiting in Kyoto in early in the morning. Um, so Sho Kishino was born in Kyoto in 1972. Sho Kishino's father was a suiboku ink wash painting artist and his mother a potter. He was raised with a strong awareness of Japanese history and creative culture. Although when he was young, he studied under a Western style painter. And it was at this time that he became influenced by worldview of Alberto Giacometti, which is to depict the visible as it appears. Contemplating the differences that exist between the Eastern and Western methods of looking at things, Kishino realized that Japanese sculpture was not concerned solely with form, but rather placed greater importance on the objects, much internal and external space. This led him to use wood as his material, a material that can be gradually shaved away. He is a regular visitor to Ryukoin Temple in Daitokuji Temple Complex in Kyoto. And meeting the chief priests, working with monks, he gradually realized his own insignificance. From that time forward, Sculpting became a form of a spiritual training through which he sought self-improvement. He devoted himself to finding his true nature through his art, honing his spirit as he carved his sculptures cut by cut. Although they may take the form of a human figure, an animal, or a priest, by paring away all superfluous material, he manages to accentuate their inner spirit. He works in wood, old wood from temples or shrines, wood that he discovers on river banks or mountains, cherry or zerkova branches or buck cedar, plum bark, mulberry roots, or fossilized wood that has been dug out of riverbeds. The shapes he creates bringing out the life force that exists within it. 
Once everything has been discarded, the resulting emptiness presents the true essence of existence. This is the sorrow and compassion of humankind. It is what fills the world with vibration of beauty that are transmitted directly to the soul of the viewer. So we are now showing the pictures um, from this exhibition. We are exhibiting over 40 pieces, including uh, his father, Tadataka's swing ink painting, and also his brother, Kan's ceramic pieces. Please uh, keep watching his beautiful work. You can see uh, his work is almost like a fusion of Giacometti and then Zen. Uh, we are very thrilled to hear his uh, background and philosophy uh, under this, uh, his unique sculpting today. This is where he is living now in Kyoto, almost close uh, to Nara Prefecture. He works with woods and uh, he collects materials from everywhere in Japan. You can see his humble studio with very small um, chisels and hammer here. He really wanted to come to New York from Kyoto. He really wished until last minute he wanted to fly from Kyoto to New York, but uh, it, under these circumstances, it was impossible. But look at his smile that uh, his energy is always wonderful. And I'm so happy to welcome today's um, uh, conversation. And uh, so Sho Kishino, uh, Kishino Sensei, are you there? Mike, Mike, ah, hi, Kyo, Shoutishi no sensei. Hi, konnichiwa. <laughs> Welcome. Domo. Early in the morning in Japan. Good. Thank you so much for joining. And then, so let's meet our guests. Uh, first, uh, Shoutishi no, uh, as we introduced, but today's uh, wonderful speaker, Jennifer Nava Mirkin. She is the artistic director for the Center for Art in Wood. Prior to her arrival at the center, she served as an embedded staff member in international art museums, as an independent curator, and as the founder of a cross-disciplinary art space. Her exhibitions have been presented in museums, art fairs, galleries, and unconventional spaces. And her writings have been seen in exhibition catalogs, anthologies, and publications that investigate and critic the intersecting fields of art, craft, and design. 
with a global perspective, honed through a life split, uh, split between two continents. She's driven by the extraordinary power of the arts to challenge preconceptions and bridge divides. Hi, Nava. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. It's so special. Thank you so much. And then, uh, I should tell you all of you today's participants, and, but Nava and Sho never met to each other. <laughs> but this uh, technology allows us to make this happen. And we are very happy to um, welcome all of you today. So Sho, Sensei, and Nava, um, why, don't, why don't you take over the dialogues and then start the conversations? Thank you so much, Shoko. And thank you for that beautiful introduction. Um, the video was wonderful and um, very reflective of the pieces. And um, it was really, really a pleasure to see it. Um, Sho, good morning. Nice good to meet morning. you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> very early for <laughs> <to> you. <laughs> very early. <笑>結構朝早いんですね。ありがとうございます。あの、朝は早いですけど、私も普段から朝は早い生活をしておりますので、今日はでもあの、こうしてえっと、ニューヨークには行けませんけど、こうやってリモートであの皆さんとお話し
Hmm. Um, and that, so that's wonderful because that leads me directly to my second question, um, which is, I wonder if you could give us a few words about, in your view, what is the role of the artist? Which definitely connects to that introduction and also to the last question I'm going to ask you today. えっと、を自分の作っているものを自分のあの生きていく道っていうことを通して世の中の人にも何かあの求められているものを作っていくそのようなことが非常に大事だと私は感じております So from the start, we all, as, as individuals, think about what is our best path and how we can best go through the, the world. And I think from the point of an artist, we think about how, as, how our own individual path uh, not only takes us through, but has, a, has an effect, and ideally a positive effect on the world, and how our works can be, form, can be used as a bridge to, to make connections amongst others. So I really think that when we're thinking about what our role is as, as an artist is to see how we can have that, that positive influence on, on others. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and then how would you say that you integrate your artistic practice into the broader scope of your own life? そして、それからあの、師匠の先生の生活にあの、作家としてのあの、あの、としてのあの、制作や修行といったものは先生の人生とどのような関係していますか。それはですね、あの、ほとんどがあの、物を作るっていうことは私自身にとって生きていく一つの修行であり、そしてその人があの私自身が生きていくためのあの糧方法であり、そしてあのものを作るっていうことは私自身にとっては普通の超作家彫刻家なら美しいもの何かあの世の中に残るものを作りたいというふうに思って、おそらく美というものを考えられると思うんですね。ですけど、私の場合は全くそういう視点からはものは作っていないんですよね。それはやはり私自身の修行、それはそのものを作ることによって自分自身の人としての彫刻をしていくっていうことがあるんですね。だからちょっと長くなりますけど、要するに私は人っていうのはそれぞれ大きな山を登っていくようなものだと思うんですよ。それは一つの生きていく道としての山。その山をどういう方向から登っていくかっ
So typically when we we're making things, we're, it's we're making things as part of this, uh, this living uh, practice and it's just very much incorporated into how I, I think of, of my life as this goal of making beautiful things and making increasingly beautiful things. And there is this, uh, this metaphor of thinking of life um, as, as a mountain and that we're all cr- crossing and climbing the, this, this, this terrain. And there are many paths to get to our destination. And for me, uh, carving sculpture is the path and of reaching this goal of, 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 of creating more beautiful world things and thus in making the world a more beautiful place. Um, well, we certainly, we certainly, when we look at your work, it's, um, it possesses a very reflective quality and the restraint of the, um, the figures and their expressions um, helps us with that. And um, there is a range of emotions, and I know this is noted also in the text, um, that, um, that the figures tend to, tend to exude a kind of um, quality of human emotion. It takes us through sorrow to, um, you have a lot of maternal mother and child figures, and also to humor and the celebration. Um, and as a body, it seems to really um, shed a light on the human nature. Um, and I would love to hear your comments on that. あの、あ、はい、そう。あ、全部の作品を見ると、とってもあの、その、あの、作品の中にある、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
that was a, a much deeper and more beautiful answer than I would be capable to to properly translate. And I, so I apologize in advance. Um, but kind, um, kind objects and, and kind feelings, sad feelings, uh, these are an inner looking aspect of uh, these inner looking aspects are, are, are such a fundamental part of of these these works and for me this is this is really just a regular part of of human life living and having an an inner an emotional world is really such part of, of of human essence so when i when i look when i'm creating an object i really am trying to bring out these these essential emotions but it's not me uh it's not uh, me taking what I want to say and my happiness, my sadness, and putting it onto the object. I look at the the materials, at, at the wood, um, and I see, oh, I see in this object a sense of sadness or a sense of joy or a sense of motherhood. And from that impression that I have, I try to bring out what I feel is 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 calling to me from the materials. That's beautiful. Um, and, and I think um, that kind of ties into the next question um, as well as a follow-up. Uh, but I think first I'd like to start with, um, in my initial conversation with Shoko, she mentioned that um, in your process you begin with with the head. So when you encounter the material, you start with the head and you let the eyes emerge and then you continue with the rest of the figure. And I thought this was really, um, I, I think in this way, it's impossible to separate the process from, from, the, um, from the resulting work because that step is so important within it. And, um, and could you speak to this idea of release? Um, through the emergence of the eyes first? Mazwa, Izen no Kotai wa Kuda ni utsukushite, arigato gozaimas. Sore kara, ano, ano, soto, ano, so saku ni tsite, ano, shitain desu ga, ano, so saku no toki ni, ano, atama kara, hajimaru, hajimeru to, ano, ショコ え、アルベルト・ジャコメッティがどのように感じて、で、だから結局その花がこんなに長くなって花の先と付け根がもう
やはりそのできてきたっていうのはその東部から作るっていくことっていうのはやはり今でも私は多いですただしそれはなぜかというとそれはその例えば人が歩いていく姿っていう時に自分の視点が歩いていく人の顔に行くからなんですよ。顔にまず興味がパッとこうその人のどういう人が歩いてるんだろうかっていうのは人はやはり顔に行くことが多いんですよね。だからどうしても顔っていうところからあの制作が始まるんです。そうすると顔から順番に行って他に行くっていうのは結局その私の掘り方っていうのはえー、っと書道なんかと同じようにあの漢字っていうのは順番に12345というふうに出順が決まってて書き終わったらそれで出来上がりますよねある意味それと同じように彫刻に関しても顔から作り出してって顔のあのが決まってったら下はおのずと決まっていくんですよそういうことがあるから、あの、顔から始まることが多いんですけど、まあ、やはりそれは、あの、私自身がパッと見て惹かれたところが、顔だから顔に行くんであって、そうでない場合は、今、手元にちょっと作りかけの作品ですけど、こんな作品があるんですね。見えますか、これ。こういうのがあるんですけど、これはね、ちょっと変わった作品だと思うんですけど、ここに本来、顔も体も、あるはずなんですだけどあここの私が大事にしてるのはここの手なんですよ。ここの祈ってる手ここの祈ってる手がこうしてあることによって周りはないけどそれを感じてもらうでも私が興味がここに感じたのはこの手なんですよだからここは手から始まるんですよね。手からスタートして周りはすでにもうないけどそこを感じてもらうそれがためにここが手から始まるだから全てが顔から始まるわけではなく私自身がどこにその木の中に何を求めどこのを感じ表現したいかそこが大事なことなんですよだから顔からで,ではなくこうして手から始まるほどもあります。I know this is a lot for Harry, but I just. I, I, sorry, I yeah. take notes. I try to take. Yeah, no there's so much, so I'm trying to type everything. I'm translating on my, yeah, as yeah. I'm typing down, so I try to get everything. I'm sorry.、And、so. It's also very philosophical, isn't it? Yeah, so,、mm -hmm. exactly.、Mm -hmm. So.、Um, Again, a very beautiful answer. So, starting、um, from the top,、um, when, I, when I was a, a, a when Kishino sensei was a, was a student, he was very much uh, inspired, uh, as, as we all know, by, by Giacometti. And when he was thinking about his own individual theory, he was thinking about how, how would Giacometti do this? And, and what, he, what Giacometti would do is he would start from the front. And when we think about when we're starting from the front, well, literally, if you're starting, if you're carving, An object from the front of the face, you're starting literally from the, the face, and you start by having the nose and you're slowly move, removing the rest of the wood until you have the nose. And as you remove the wood, you see, oh, what kind of nose are you going to have? And you're getting this, this, this practical approach of, of carving away、uh, the, the, the wood to reveal, reveal the object.、And、separately from, a, from a,、um, a, a, a more personal, perhaps practical standpoint, when you come across someone, On, on the street, what is the first thing that you probably notice about them、um, is, is but their face. So, in the same way that the face is the first thing that you, is, is the first, is typically at least the first aspect of, of another human being that you're going to make this kind of connection with, the face is this obvious place to, to start and to, from which you can reveal the rest of the body. And another, 
aspect of this, and in, in the same way that the face, the face is this logical place to start, it's sort of like a calligraphy, for example. In calligraphy, there's a set in, in, in uh, when writing Chinese characters, there's a set um, order in which the strokes are typically written, and it is one, two, three, four, and in the same way that you, there's a way that you would start with writing the character to get the, the beautiful um, revelation of the meaning of, 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 of the word, there is the same process for exposing and, and bringing forth the, the body that I, I think of as a, as a set way of going to do things. However, I, I will give a caveat. Kishino Sensei does give a, a, a caveat in that, in, which I'm taking a step back, he also said that no body and no face exists without a body. So once the face is um, is on the object, the rest of the object can naturally, the, na the rest of the form can naturally fall into face. However, as he showed us with that one object, that the, the, the piece that he was holding, holding up, um, the sensei, uh, もう一度見せてくださいませんか作品の the piece there that is um, more uh, precise is actually the hand. And in that particular object, when he was looking with that, um, that, that piece of material, it spoke to him that the hand was actually the proper place to begin with this particular object. So even though typically he would start with the face, it's not such a rigid rule that cannot be broken when he feels when he gets a strong sense from the material that, oh, this other aspect is really the place to start and from which the rest of the, of the object will appear, he, he goes with that as well. Thank you for that eye into the process. Um, uh, I think it sounds like uh, there is this, this very, very studied, but also very um, spiritual connection with the material in which um, Shiro-san is working. And um, that leads me to, we can't leave this discussion uh, without talking about the material of wood and um, all that it offers artists who work in it. Uh, so I think one of the things that's remarkable about these works, it's not only that um, there is, uh, you're working with the material of wood, but there are also many other natural materials that are involved in, in the making of these works. Uh, for example, the pigments are made out of, um, Shoko, let me know if, if I'm getting yes. this right. Mm -hmm. um, um, oyster shells, ground oyster shells, mm -hmm. and charcoal, and rust from iron. Um, so these, this, this commitment to using natural materials is, I think, a very important facet of the work. Um, and certainly, um, when we're using clay and um, and wood, we are also talking about ground. So I'm going to leave it there because there's another aspect to this question. But I, but um, uh, an initial discussion of of the use of natural materials, or um, or the sourcing of materials um, with that natural history is is uh, where I want to ask him right now. Mm -hmm. あの、特に自然の素材も大事だそうですね。あの、あの、木材はもちろんですけど、あの、なんて、あ、し、し、そうですね。ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、ご、
、ちょっとその自然さについて、あの、その、あ,あの、ご感想を聞きたいのです。そのおそらく質問としては、はい、極,極力その流木なら流木そ,そのあの出てきた姿をなるべくあのなんていうか残しながらも材料も自然に沿ったものなるべく自分の施すものは最小限にとどめるというような感覚をこうどういうふうに考えているかということだと思うんですね。はい、ありがとうございます<笑>わかりました。えー、っと、そうですね。えー、自然の木を使って、えー、表現するっていうことの意味ですね。これはですね、あのー、まあ、私自身が、あの、先ほどちょっと話しさせてもらったように、自分の頭の中にこういう作品があって、それを木に当てはめる。っていうような作品の制作方法では、まずそこが違うんですよね。つまり、やはり私があのものを作りたいというふうに感じるのは、それはまず素材の材料を見たときに、そこにものすごく私自身が心を動かされる、惹かれるから、そこに何かを掘ろうとするっていうことがあるんですね。でそれをその木を見た時にその中に見えてくるものを掘るんですけどなぜそこにそういう木に行き着いたかっていうことはやはりそれは私があの結局ジャコメッティから離れていったっていうことと非常に深い関係はあると思うんですよ。それはなぜかというと結局そこに禅という私の考え方あの禅宗という宗教、まあ、あの仏教というものはその事故っていうのを消し去るっていうことを特に大事にするんですね。普通なら作家っていうのは自分自身を表現することがあのよくその方法だとして自分の作品を作ろうとする。ところが私の場合はむしろその正反対なんですよね。それが自分を自身をじゃあなしに相手に身を委ねるっていうことから私の作品は出来上がってくるんですよ。だからむしろ自己を消し去って相手に素材になりきるっていうことが非常に大切であって、これはまさにその、まあ、あの、自他同一、自分と他が一緒になっていく。自分がその、あの、作品と完全に一体化していく。そういうような考え方っていうのが根本的にあるんですよつまりそこにあのを大事にするっていうことはやはりそれは木自体が持ってる一番持ってるその木の持ってるものっていうのは何なんだろう柔らかいものはやっぱり柔らかくそのあの朽ち果てて残ってった中にその中から優しさを感じるものはそういう時に優しさを掘るあるいは厳しさ激しさがあるものはそこに激しさや厳しさを掘っていく。つまりそれはあのー、なぜそういう材を選ぶかっていうのは自分の自己というものを消していってその木の方に自分の身を委ねていくっていう木にお任せするそういうことを大切にする、あのー、からそういう素材っていう自然のものっていうのを大事にする。だからそこをあの全部その自然のものを消し去ってしまうようにで掘ってしまったら何のためにその木があったのかっていう言い必要がなくなりますよねだからそれはあの曲がってる木は曲がったりなりの形にしていくっていうことを大切にするそれは自分がっていうことより向こうに近づこうとする相手の木。I, I think, uh, show is very, um... You know, talking about his core of his creativity and why the Harry is processing that. I'm gonna try to、um, support the talk, but、um, uh, why his、uh, medium is very natural and then his,、uh, even the other materials can be very natural.、Uh, it is not just the methods or techniques or his preference, but rather. His、uh, attitude towards art as an artist. Because 
artists can be sometimes very egoistic. Artists can be very expressing their own selves and then showing their life and showing their creativity and expression. But he's trying to be probably opposite way to make as an artist, like even um, uh, insignificance of himself, realization of he is nothing. Like he, once he encountered a piece of stone or a piece of driftwood or fossilized wood, that he even, he rather listened to the voice of the wood. He rather listened to the history of the wood. And so at that state of mind, he is nothing. It's like probably more Zen uh, philosophy. Um, it, it's going to be a uh, big conversation. I think we should have another conversation from home series in one day about this. But um, I like this question because um, artists can be self, sometimes very egoistic and selfish and sometimes very big himself, in, right? But he tried to um, um, rely on to the nature, rely on to the, uh, the material. That, that's why he picks wood as a material which has history, which still alive, breathe, you know, and grains and lives and still uh, changes compared with other materials. Wood is still breathing. And so for him, uh, the selection of wood as a material of his creation is more like uh, he becomes one, united to the, to the uh, medium. So that same idea that when he sees the driftwood, driftwood, driftwood inspires him. Oh, this shape can be bird. This can be a mother. And so for him, his uh, visual image is secondary. So first he picks a piece and make it re uh, rebirth, uh, bring life back to, to, the, to the wood. So I think it's a beautiful um, discussion point, uh, which Nava brings out. And then, Hari, do you think uh, my translation, I probably put my own perspective at the same time. And I myself, uh, from last question, you talk about the head and face first. Uh, uh, reminds me of the philosopher Emmanuel Levinas. Um, he wrote a book about uh, beyond uh, existence. You can, when you see a person, you first see face. And then once you're, you encounter the face, that's beyond. It, it is, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's about uh, life and magical of the encounter and then once you meet somebody else now is the time you commit to this person right if you fall in love you commit on this person no matter what so face first if you think about somebody you always think about somebody's face and somebody's eyes mm -hmm. and you don't think about somebody's uh, belly or maybe somebody think about it but the, the face is really an existence and essence of our nature. That probably that is a very big topic we can really discuss profoundly, to, no, not just today, but also we want to continue our conversations. But yeah. Thank you. Yes. Harry, do you have anything to add before I continue? I'll only perhaps add one small bit to what what Shoko-san very elegantly uh, condensed uh, from from a, what was also a very beautiful answer from Kishino Sensei that there's when he's working with his materials he feels uh, a, a, this extremely deep um, conversation between himself and and the and the raw material and he's. When he has this, this idea in, in, in Zen Buddhism of, of nullifying this, the self, and he tries to nullify himself 
thus and thus rely on the object to tell him what it wants to be. So when he, it's not that he sees um, a, a, as a piece of wood and say, oh, I think this would make a nice bird. It's more that he this finds a piece of wood and it is saying to him, this, this is the form that I would like you to form me into. And then he's just the, the, the conveyor for this object to become its, its proper self. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, there is, um, I, I think that is the thing about wood, right? Is, be, is that it's, um, it's, you can call it a raw material because that's how the artist approaches it, but really it's coming with its own history. And, um, and it's showing its history. It's a document of that history. Mm -hmm. and the artist has the opportunity to read from that document and interpret that history and then respond accordingly. It's not like a blank piece of paper. Wood, is, wood comes with its own markings and, and shows of damage and infestation. And that's, in many ways, that's what draws people to it. Um, and I'll just add to that, that um, I'm not sure if the audience or the people here today know that um, um, the, the, the materials, the, the wood that you choose to work with is either sourced from um, rivers, found, wood found in rivers, so river driftwood, and um, the wood uh, sourced from dismantled ancient Buddhist temples. And um, so that adds another story and narrative of place that's imprinted inside the grains of the wood. Um, and I and I would I have we have so many questions we can yes yes let's hours. continue that yeah it's it's um, um, <laughs> it's a Thursday evening that's let's be cozy uh, but so I wanted to be sure that um, that Kishino Sansei has a chance to respond to that and then I have another question then I want to open it up to that. The ano sen Sensei no sozai. は、そのあの仕方について これ私が使わなければもう処分その
、それはやはりその神社ので何千年も育ってきたっていうことが何か自分の心の中で人の心の中ではそこに思いを馳せるっていうことがあると思うんです。それは一つには大きなこと、大事なことだと思うんですよね。日本人っていうのは特にそういう昔の古い歌とかそういうものを読まれるのことで、それをあの歌の裏にあるもの、そ,のそこにどういうこと思いがあったんだろうっていうことに思いを馳せて、そこに見えてるところ以外のものに感じ、そういうことを感じて、そこに共感し、共に生きていくっていうことが、日本人は特にできるんですよ。それは実際の,あの目には見えてないんです。でも、心の中にあるんです。心の中に生きてるんですよ。だから私はそういうご縁がたまたまご縁があって集まってきた材料ですけどそこの材料っていうのを大切にしそしてその中にやはり一つあの当時のお寺の和尚がどういうふうに生きてきたかっていうような思いっていうのはより私をそこに集中させていくっていうかそこに引きつける魅力になりますよね。それはおそらく私以外にもあのそのこの木材料で作ってるっていうことを皆さんがこうご覧になられた時にやはりそこに何かを感じていただくことっていうのは一つあると思うんですよね。そういうことがあってよりなんかそういう材料っていうのは私は心動かされるっていうことがあります。そんなところですかね。I'll try to capture all of that. So,、um, so it's just to start when I'm using these, when Kishino Sensei is using these, these old objects, it's not that he's necessarily walking around at, at a, 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 a temple or a, or a shrine saying, oh, this looks like a good piece of, of lumber. I'll just take it away.、Um, it's more that he has,、uh, if I heard correctly, he has a friend who works in, in the construction industry、uh, and, um, and he, or he sees that temple is throwing away old materials and he says, Uh, uh, that if he, he sees that if he doesn't salvage these, these pieces of the, of, the, of the temple's history, then the, these objects, these materials will go, will go to waste. They'll just be thrown away. And he sees it as an opportunity to, to give them this, this、um, second life. It's also that these, these, these old temples were made from very high quality. The material, high quality, high quality wood. So it, ha- it has this, this, this practical、um, a possibility for, these, for, this, for, this,、uh, for this, new, this new use.、Uh, so, like, there's also, I, I, I enjoy, like, and I enjoy this idea of, of these objects. h i s h i s h i Sensei enjoys this idea of, of the material serving as, as part of, of, the, of the object and then bringing its, its past into its. Into its New reality. And, and in this last section, I'll admit I didn't quite f- fully understand it, exactly what he was, what he was trying to, to convey. But I, I, if I understood it correctly,、um, there's this idea in, in Japan of an object sort of having、um, uh, this inner reality or this inner spirit and this idea of, of trying to bring it forth. s h o k u s a n did I properly understand、yes. what he was? Okay, great.、Yes. Um, um, and then also、uh, one of our、uh, audience's comments. Uh, Mr. Saito Joich just type in,、uh, it's actually in Japanese, but、uh, in Japan, that we have some、uh, kind of a spiritual、uh, habits that we believe、uh, in God、um, mm-hmm. in the nature side. Like we have God in river, God in sun, God in moon. And so we are surrounded by many spiritual、um, uh, gods,、uh, not just the one. Particular religious God to pray for, but more like we are living in nature. Which, okay, if I run the water too much, or、oh, the God of water angry at me, <laughs> or we say, like, if we don't eat everything, like rice, like、uh, my mother told me, like, you're the God of rice is angry at you, or something like so. In our kind of、uh, cu- custom and then habits, like, we Have, we are living in those elements of river and sun and sea and mountains. And so those are like probably a little bit a m i n i s m kind of feeling, but the,、um, probably throughout his、uh, work, 
you can experience that kind of background where he, he is, especially in Zen practice. Yes. And probably as for the, uh, I, w- I believe that Nava has a wonderful question, especially at this current state of the world, right? Yes. So I was going to ask if it's all right, we push it a couple of minutes to make sure that we, even though it's so hard to convince me to leave the topic of the material of wood, because I, I, I have a million more questions that have stemmed from from his answer, but I but I do think that we need to make sure that this the conversation has a a path. Um, and is that all right if we if we um, push it a couple of minutes? Yes, ab- absolutely. Let's continue. Okay, thank it's you. It's so you. important. Yes, thank you. So, um, Kishino Sensei, I I did want to um, connect to the way we started this conversation, and you mentioned that. Um, the role of you as a, you you believe that your role as an artist is um is to make connections um and to use your the tools that you have mind uh, in western craft philosophy we say um head hard hands um from um Diderot, uh in the 18th century um so so using those tools to, um, to build connections through the world around us. And um, that, is such a, that is such a sentiment that I feel very close to. And, um, and especially in this time. And you talked about your body of work really being a response to the, to this, the time we are in now. And, um, and that I, I feel so compelled to come to the gallery and to um, share space with those objects because they have so, they seem to radiate a kind of um, quiet spirituality. And, um, and so I, I wanted to ask you um, how these forms are relevant in this time. Um, and, and I'll just want to add one thing. There is one work, it's kind of a, a taller work, and it's one of the works that seems to respond um, more obliquely to Giacometti and the influence that he had um, on you and as an artist. And, um, and there was a scorch mark somewhere in there. So, so you know, it's impossible for, uh, I spent part of my life on the West Coast, it's impossible for me to look at a piece of wood, even, even a figurally carved, resolved artistic piece of wood um, sculpture without thinking about um, forest fires. Uh, and we have had quite the year. And so um, if you could respond to the, uh, that idea of um, what these works mean in this time, I think we'd all like to hear. はい、すみません。はい、ちょ、ちょっとあの今のあの話の始まりに戻りますが、あの、そしてあのアーティストのあの人々のあの、あの、の役割について、あの、話したいんですが、この作品が現在の世の中にあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
訴えかけてほしいというふうに思ってるんですよね。これは非常にその私の作品から今のその世の中の状況っていうことに対して訴えかけることを感じていただくことっていうのは難しいかもしれませんけどでも私がしてる仕事っていうのは人種も全く関係ない日本も西洋もアフリカも全く何もない人が人でが生きていくっていう人のあるべき生き方っていうことをこのことを特に大切に思っておりますそしてそ何,が何がないちょっと僕、えーとですね、そう人が人であること。Uh, so、what he said is like,、um, not just, not, not, I am Japanese or not, this is Eastern, this is Western. He does not care. This is where he is in Kyoto, where is America or in Africa. He does not care. What he cares is about being. It's more universally same as a one being. But this is. So, Please continue. So, Thank you.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in the case of the gene, it's not a good thing. But 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 it's not a good thing. 関係がないはず人が生きていくっていうことでだからそれはどちらが進んでる遅れてるなんていうことはないんですよ人が生きて人として生きていくっていうことっていうのはむしろもう大事にしやなあかんことは今人類っていうのはこのようにリモートでこんな対話なんかもできるぐらい科学も進んでますでも私は人として生きることっていうのは後ろに戻ることも大事だと思うそれはあの人は前に進むことしか見てない経済しか見てないそれは結局自分がっていう自分を主体に考えてるからなんです。自分の国を主体に考え、自分自身を主体に考えてるからなんです。私があるべき姿っていうのはそうではない。自分自身をっていうのはまず自分をよそに置いといて、そしてあの人とつながるところ、他の人々が生きていくのとつながっていくところ、そういうことを特に大事にしていかないとダメだと思いますね。で私が特に作品でもあの大事にしていることっていうのはやはりそれは今このコロナっていうことが起こってから特に若い人でもいつ誰がかかって命を落とすかわからないそれは生死っていうことに非常にこのことが密接なことに世界中の人がなってますよねおそらくそれはあるはずですだから今まではその楽しいことばっかりして生きてきたらいいというふうなところが死といいうものが身近に迫ってきてきるそれは年をいけばいくほど死というのは近づくにあの従ってやはりそれは死という不安からどういうふうにしてこれを解消していくのかっていうことが若いうちからその死という不安からを,をどうしたらいいんやろうっていうことが今世界中の人々が課題としてあるはずです。その答えっていうのはそれぞれの宗教の中にもあると思うんですけど私が近くにある禅という宗教の中にはその不安を乗り越えていく方法っていうのがあるんですねそれはどういう方法かっていうのはその世の中の無常っていうあの移り変わっていくことそれは自分自身もそこに大きく自分を無にしていくその自分も消えていくもんだということを自覚していくことなんですよねでそれは私が、あの、ちょっと話が長くなりますけど、あの、特にあの感じてるのは、つい先日、この後ろのこの墨石の書かれたお嬢さんが、今年に亡くなられたんですけど、その方は、あの、最後の最後まで生きていくっていうことに、やはり執着はしてはった。それは死を受けていく、受け入れていくっていうことはどうあるんですけど、でもね、死ぬが死ぬまで生きていくっていうことに対してあの必死に生きていかはりましたよねだから結局人っていうのはあの恐怖もあるし不安もあるでもできることっていうのはちょっと挨拶文にも書きましたけど目の前の自分自身のするべきことに夢中になって生きていくことそれはねそのことによって要は自分があの無になるっていくっていうことがあるんですよそこが一番大事な。その自身を自分自身が生きていく目の前の食事をする時は食事をする
、仕事をするときは仕事をする、夢中になってしていく、それしか人が生きていくっていう方法はないんですよ。これが人の不安をなくなしていく。明日まで、今日は今日だけしか生きれないかもしれない。でも今日、自分のするべきことを精一杯していく。これが不安をなくなしていく方法だと私は思うんですね。で私はつまりその作品を作っていく中でそういう無常というものを感じていただきそれして自分の自身が何をするべきかっていうことをそれぞれがあの問いかけていくような作品としてそこにあれば私非常に嬉しいなというふうに感じているんですそんな思いがあります。So that, that was, that was a, a, a,、um... In, in, a, in, a much short, in a much shorter form, there is the, at the heart of all of these, of these tremendous、um, challenges that we face as a world are individuals or nations who choose to think about only themselves and are not thinking about the broader impacts or the broader、uh, realities. However, the Proper way of going through life,、uh, if I'm understanding Kishino Sensei correctly, is this idea of, of thinking about how we can best make an impact in our life and in the impact and in the life of others. So, so for, me, for,、uh, for Kishino Sensei, as an artist, it is, it is to create his work. He gave the example also of, of the hanging scroll behind him, the calligraphy of which was written by, a, by someone who just passed away this past year, but to the very end. Of, of her life, she was making art and trying to give it her all to have this, this positive impact. So, this idea that when we can come together, even yes, all of us doing our own individual things, and, 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 and what the way that we,、um, he didn't use his reference, but the way that he is perhaps said earlier to like cross the mountain in our own best path, when In doing that in a proper way, that is trying to build these connections to others and a, have a positive influence, that is the, the key to,、mm -hmm. to building this better, this better、um, society and a better world. And I, I, I could add that、uh, because it was very beautiful what he said is like, we, we have a fear, like, because we, we care about ourselves. We, are, we have fear because we care about tomorrow's economy. We are fearing because tomorrow's life. We, we, are, we have fear, but the only way we can overcome those fears is becoming、uh, absorb at the present,、um, um, absorb today, like, like a child. Like a child has no fear because a child plays. Now, the present, they live now. The child does not care tomorrow's food. The child plays now. The, the, the essence of、um, overcoming the fear or anxiety is to become absorb the present and then enjoy this, this moment. So、um, he said,、uh, This is about the life and death. Now, the COVID、uh, condition m a k e us realize that we will die anytime soon. Maybe, you know, we now have this fear. But、uh, don't worry, he said, because if you live and enjoy now, this is okay. So, I like the idea, it's very positive. How do you think, Nava? Absolutely. And it's, and it's a reminder that I think many people are looking for, for art,、um, artworks like this that take on this kind of form that, that really em, embody the,、um, the dignity and the range of spirit,、um, not just human spirit, because we didn't talk so much about、um, the breadth of the work, even in the show, which is、um, also, also, there are a lot of animal forms and, and just everything speaks to life. So I think that in this time, it's, it's, it must be very, very soothing to be surrounded by artwork like this in the gallery.、Um, that, that you can come, you know, especially being in New York. 
um, or in a city, an urban environment like we are, where you're you're sort of surrounded by news and and uh, the messages that you get all the time and the noise and and the fears and the anxieties as as um as you both spoke to and um and then to be confronted with artworks that are so full of presence and so um so sensitive and and exude a kind of quietude um in the space and and i did i did want to talk a little bit about um how they changed the space and how um, how there is an influence there because it's not just that an, uh, Heidegger wrote about um, the third space, right? And the way that artworks change the space that they're in. And when we enter into that space, we too are changed. And, um, and this, is, this is how, um, you know, I, I think a lot of us sitting here today would like to share space with these artworks. So that's, that's so true. ね、あの、ちょっと I love this uh, beautiful um, comments on uh, work and then the exhibition uh, is just so beautiful actually. Uh, we, um, we are, uh, it's not easy to um, welcome any people at this point at the gallery, but the exhibition itself is so soothing and calming and then uh, serenity is filled with the space and energy is very pure and so spiritual and i love being here and then i'm um i hope that uh, our videos and also we have the um website uh, we are going to share a little later but since the time is a little bit tight now uh we would like to open to the public uh, a little bit comments i can kick but um any audience from uh, today's um uh, participants, uh, somebody asked about the size. So the largest piece uh, in the exhibition starts like 120 centimeter, which is like almost 50 inches tall. But also we have this very small size piece like this size and this middle size. We have variety of pieces. And then um, how about uh, I can call some friends here um, do you have any questions? There was, um, mm. there was a question about Giacometti and, um, and I know mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Sansa did answer, um, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that in a different, in a different way, but I did want to add to that, um, mm. um, also Brancusi, who has influenced many, 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 uh, mm -hmm. sculptors working in the material of wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, あの、ジャコメッティの影響ということもあるんですけども、でも、やはりあの空間の鳥とか、ああいうブランクーシーの作品をあの見た時に、ま、私が20歳ぐらいの時に、なんでこんな鳥になるんやろうっていうことに対して、すごく自分自身考えてたことがありましたね。すごく不
Um, how about uh, my friend Rick? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a, I've been overthinking this, I'm sure, but I'm fascinated with the idea that uh, Giacometti and uh, your father and your brother create their art by addition mm -hmm. and seem to be imagining things that don't exist until they make them. Mm -hmm. But you're doing something totally different, and I don't. And I wonder how you view their quest versus yours, where you think the object is there to be discovered, and you remove the stuff that's trapping it, and suddenly there it is. So you are finding something that exists in the present already. It's there, rather than it doesn't exist until you build it. How do you feel about that? Does that make any sense? Mm, that's a good question, I think. Mm -hmm. I know. そうですね。ちょっとあの岸野先生、岸野先あのジャックメティとそして岸野先生のお父さんとあの弟さんがあのあのあの創作するとあの何かに加えるんですね。あの例えば罪は鏡に加えてて何を描いててですが先生が自分の作品を作るときにその木材があるとそれから引き取るんですね。で、そのあの。違いについて。ちょっと教えてくださいませんか。えっ、ー、と、そのことに関しては。それは特に日本のあの。まあ、という空間っていうの取り方。っていうのが特に大事だと思うんですけど。あの、ジャコメッティの場合は。つけていくっていうことは、そのもの自体に。すべてがあるんですね。彼の作品っていうのはほとんどそのものなんです。でも、私の作品っていうのは、そのある点、そのものによって、周りの見えない空間を生み出していく。その見えない空間もひっくるめて作品。だから、さっきこういうふうに見せたような、この作品ありますよね。これはここ空間ないですよね。ところがですね、僕の作品っていうのは、ここがすべてが作品なんです。ここの時代じゃなしに、この木時代じゃなしに、ここに空間を、ここを感じてもらう。ここは、それぞれ、あの、ご覧になられる方っていうの、その、ご覧になられる方っていうことによって見え方は、その日、その日によって変わってくると思うんですけど、でも、私が大事にしていることっていうのは、ここに手があることによって、ここに体があり、動いていく、こう、ずっと動いていく。こういう、その周りの空間、見えない、間ということを非常に大事にするす。これは、あの、父がやってた水墨画の仕事と同じで、点を打つことで、周りに雨を感じさせたり、雪を感じさせたり、っていうことが可能でもいい。私の場合は、彫刻でまさに墨絵の世界を表現している。というふうに考えてもらうと、非常にわかりやすいかもしれませんね。So Okay, I'm not muted. Um, so when we think this is perhaps a, 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 a more Japanese approach to, to creating art, um, but when we look at a work by Giacometti, the object is, is, the, is the art. That is, but when we think of, of Japanese art, and specifically Kishino Sensei's art, the whole atmosphere around the object is, an integral, is also an integral part of the of the piece so when we look at for perhaps that that piece that he showed us a moment ago that um that he's still working on it's 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 a small sliver of wood but the whole atmosphere around it is incorporated into how we are supposed to view the object and this is actually something that we also see in um in sumi in ink wash painting um mastered by his father where he might make and if you look through the exhibition you'll see objects that really really speak to to this idea that he might draw a single tree or he might make a small mark but it in it implies this whole greater um atmosphere where um in in one of uh one of his father's works he a a the more late the a heavier drawing of the branches of the tree imply perhaps heavy rain has just followed or, or falling snow and these are just an an aspect of the work that we don't see but is inherently there in the up in the art mm -hmm. i like this uh how he conclude this uh, conversation with this, uh, probably we can tell his, his 
sculpting for emptiness, like which is not just a negative space, but he sculpted what he's not interested in sculpting that the form, but he rather uh, enjoying sculpting and to create the space uh, um, spreading from the, the, the piece. So he's not necessarily interested in making the perfect form or the 365 degree perfection, but he rather wants to have the essence of the existence in which I can tell emptiness is a kind of his uh, goal. And uh, since the 6 p.m. is close to New York City, uh, in Japan, I think it's 7 a.m., but I would like to um, thank you, all of you. Um, Nava, what a beautiful conversation you bring out. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was, it was only a pleasure for me. And, um, and I, I want to um, uh, note one thing. If, if um, Kishino Sensei is ever in the East Coast, um, hopefully in the near future, please come to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Yes, it's very close to, from New York. So yes, that's, that's very um, nice of you. Thank you so much for your invitation. And then uh, um, Kishino Sensei, um, what a great conversation we made. And then I'm sorry that you cannot fly from Japan, and I, but your peace is here, your babies are here, and then your nature and your energy are all over here in New York. So we are very happy, and thank you so much for your wonderful artistic creativity. Thank you. And then, um, uh, Harry, actually, he tried his wonderful um, contribution to this today's conversation. Without you, it's impossible. So thank you again. And then before closing entirely, uh, we are going to share our website since we are currently um, uh, opening the gallery appointment only. Uh, we have an exhibition page online and uh, the, all the works and even the exhibition space and then uh, images are here in the website. And then uh, again, our world is uh, having a many, many challenges and this difficult environment around us, but, uh, and it's very hard to find your own balance sometimes but let's um, stay close to yourself first and then be a best friend of yourself. Um, the world is so busy and then too much for you, but uh, his work actually reminds us that the state of peace and then serenity. And uh, exhibition is until October 8th and uh, we are going to continue our journey and I hope we can stay connected and um, we would like to keep in touch with you. So thank you so very much, all of you today. Thank you, Shoko-san. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. thank you, Harry. Thank you very, very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you so very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Have a good Bye. morning in Japan. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>